Welcome folks. Today we're going to follow along in Visual Studio. We're going to talk about custom middleware in a .NET web application. My examples will be a React app, but yours could be MVC, Razor Pages, whatever you want. The middleware steps will be the same. If you liked the video, please subscribe. Talk to you next time. So I have here a React application built in Visual Studio. I'll show you how to create it. Go ahead and go to New Project and go to Templates and search for React. You're going to choose ASP.NET Core with React.js and then you just have to pick if you want to use uh, individual accounts authentication or no authentication, which you can roll your own later. Go ahead next and create your project. If you go to the startup.cs, you'll see similar project even if it wasn't React with all .NET Core web apps. And if you go down to the configure method, you'll see that the existing middleware each has a line here. Inside these middleware classes are pre-rolled code. There are other ones that you could add as well to handle cookies, etc. I'm now going to create an inline custom middleware. And then once you've seen that example, we'll go ahead and build a custom middleware in a file and put it in here, which is even easier than doing it inline. Let's begin. When your middleware executes depends on where you place it in this pipeline. Imagine when you hit this method, each individual section of app.use is what's happening on the request. If at any point the request is short circuited, it won't make it to the next one of these, except there may be some code within the previous one that still needs to run. I'll show you how that works now. Let's go ahead and add right in between static files and routing. Let's add a custom middleware. The minimum requirement for a inline custom middleware is going to be that you execute the next item in the custom middleware. If you take a look at the parameters here, we're saying we get the context. That's important because that's where everything about the request lives, which oftentimes that's really what we're doing with middleware is we're filtering things out or we're saying if the request contains this, I want to handle it differently, etc. So for example, you can get at the request body like that. Let's go ahead and put a debug dot write line in here. I'm going to use the system dot diagnostics for that. And we'll call this before data vids. And let's do it again and we'll do after data bits. Now what we're doing here is I'm saying in this middleware everything that happens before the next middleware is executed here and everything that happens after the next middleware has finished running will happen here. So if we short circuit in the next middleware we'll still run after data bits, but we won't run the next item in the pipeline. I'm going to go ahead and run the app so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to hit F5. So the application's running here, and I'm going to click on a few different requests just to populate. Obviously, this is just the, I don't want to hit my breakpoint on my controller there, but this is just the information that comes with the template. I didn't create this, but what I did do is I executed requests by clicking on things. So now, Let's go to the output window and you'll see there's going to be several instances down here. And I uh, it's I know it's a little bit small, but it says before data vids, before data vids, then an after data vids, before data vids, after data vids. So it's getting called with each request. Now what we're going to do is that I promised to show you it as inline. This is inline. Let's show it to you as a file. So right click on your project and go ahead and go to add new item and we're going to go to search here and I'm going to type middleware should be only one result middleware class let's call this other middleware how's that sound now this comes up for you the one thing it doesn't have by default is it's not a sync so if you want to keep kind of consistent with what we've been doing we can go ahead and change this to be a sync to make it async Go ahead and just add the keyword async before task. And you're going to await the next one. 
and you could take the return off since it is that task. Like before, we could do something like debug dot, and we've got to add that reference here. System dot diagnostics. If you want to use that, debug dot write line data vids not in line before and after imagine it you think of it kind of like a stack as far as the way it's going to look in the output because it's going to call this one and whatever that's going to call is called and so on and so forth before it actually gets back to do this one one more thing to think about here is anything that you do to change the request should be done before you go to the next middleware step. It's not just that you don't want the next middleware step to be executed and you want to short circuit it. Yes, that's true. You could do that. But if the request has already been modified and you come back and you modify it here, you could be looking at going outside of what the protocol could allow. And you're definitely going to get errors. So if you're going to modify the request, I believe you should do it here. One more thing to discuss before we add this other middleware to the pipeline is that you may need access to other classes once you get in here. Well, good old dependency injection to the rescue, you can put it right here in the constructor. If you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see that it also created for you an extension class with the same name as the class above, other middleware. It's called other middleware extensions, and in there we've got use other middleware. So obviously if it was John middleware, it'd be use John middleware. So we're gonna call this the use other middleware in the startup.cs to call our non inline custom middleware. So app dot use other middleware just like that so now let's go ahead and run it just like last time i'm going to click on a few of the links up top i've removed the breakpoint so each time i click a link we're sending a request that's going to go through the pipeline let's take a look at what that looks like so we've got before data vids then after that we call the data vids not in line before and then we've got data vids not in line after and then after data vids. Remember I said you could look at it kind of like a stack and since we're calling something before we execute the next method, pretty simple, right? All right, well now you've seen it in action. We we were able to execute both our inline and our not inline middleware. We haven't done a whole lot with the request, but I've shown how you can get access to it with the context. Just don't forget you got to call the next item in the pipeline. And maybe one last thing I could show you is how to short circuit that pipeline. Go back to your other middleware class. Let's just do a hypothetical example. If the contacts request the path contains, oh, value, sorry, contains, Let's say the weather forecast, because we know there's a weather forecast controller that comes with this template by default. Now, because it's going to be coming in the request that we have with our pipeline, we need to change this to be lowercase. We've seen that in other .NET Core web apps, so it's always best to keep that lowercase to prevent any mm, errors. And then let's go ahead and say we're going to, instead of running the next because all you really have to do to short circuit it is just don't call next so we'll put that in an else statement so we make sure we do not call that if if it's a weather forecast so let's go ahead and go to the context but instead of looking at the request we're going to modify the response let's go to the response and then we'll do write async so that means obviously await and we'll just say you can't see my weather okay we also do need to change the content type and the status code of that response if we're just going to send back text the browser needs to know what to do with that so go ahead and go to the 
HTTP context again, back into the response again. And let's set those two things. We'll set the status code to status codes. Let's do bad request. We've got a few choices there. And we'll set the context response content type. And here we could just do text forward slash plain. All right, let's run that. I'm going to hit F12 and go to the network tab. In my case, I'm going to disable cache. We'll click on fetch data. And there you have it. There's your weather forecast request. You can't see my weather. 